Look at that morning sun. So nice. I hope you guys are having a great day, but thanks for joining in. I'm about to make myself a collagen drink. I started drinking collagen every morning and then I'm trying to have water. I don't have lemons right now, but at least start off with some water and then I'm gonna get to my cappuccino. The most important part of my morning. <laughs> not gonna make a cappuccino because my husband just texted me asked if he wanted me to, if he wanted if he wanted me no if he wanted him to pick up a coffee for me why is that so confusing he's gonna bring me a coffee home and I gave him my Starbucks order I have a order that I love for the holidays it's their holiday blend blonde roast with a splash of half and half and a pump of cinnamon dolce syrup and then sometimes I'll sprinkle like cinnamon on top but it's a lot less calories than the latte version, which is like can be 270, 350 calories. And it is good to indulge. Like, like I don't restrict myself by any means. But if you're getting all like those drinks every single day, that's like an extra 300 calories that can hinder your progress. Or if you're trying to maintain weight, like that adds in 100%. So it's cutting out things like that. This is why they say cut out sugary drinks. Like making small mindful choices and being mindful of the choices that you do make makes a big difference. So anyway, I like to just do a coffee version with a pump of the cinnamon dolce syrup. I really like that one. I tried trust test on praline, but I wasn't crazy about it. And it's not that sweet. Like my aunt, she is a huge coffee drinker like I am. She's my mom's sister. Over the weekend for my dad's birthday, I would like bring coffee and I didn't know she would be there. And she's like, oh, can I have some too? And I'm like, absolutely. And I'm like, but it has like a sweet, a salt, a syrup in it. And she's like, oh, I don't really usually like a sweetened. And I'm like, just try it. It's not that sweet. And she's like, you're right. Actually, this is very good. And she likes it. And she like does not like sweetness in her drinks at all. So yeah, so he's going to bring me a coffee back. And I'm just going to like make the kids beds because I let them watch Minnow Kids right now. It's like a Christian kids app. It's like think PBS Kids, but like a Christian version. So sometimes in the morning I let them watch that and then we're gonna get started on homeschool but i'm gonna sit down i think i'm gonna do some red light therapy and i'll talk to you guys about some beauty and skincare <laughs> I do that routine literally every single day morning and night so in the nighttime i put everything get everything out of the way so i can go to bed and then in the morning i put everything back i am so over <laughs> being here i do miss my house so much but you know we have a house it's cold out we have a roof over our heads and we're in the process of building so i gotta look at it from a different perspective but sometimes you can't help but feel how you feel as long as you're not ruminating in that and you're moving forward but anywho i wanted to talk about beauty and skincare and all that good stuff so as you guys know i've been using this mask red light therapy has been very well studied for things like collagen production and that is what i'm looking for because as you get older you're losing collagen and you can't reverse aging but if you can do things at home that will help contribute to a more youthful look, then I'm all for it. This is expensive, but red light therapy is studied. And I actually just saw a video recently where if it was a dermatologist or a aesthetic practitioner or something like that, like a nurse practitioner who works in aesthetics, she was reviewing like the wands that have the red light therapy and how they compare to a mask. And she was saying she would much rather have people use a mask because it needs to be in like direct contact with the skin like very close to the skin versus the wand in like one area like if you truly want all over results they're still having a 20 percent off sale if you've ever looked into red light therapy i really like this one because it is flexible and higher dose is a good reputable brand you do have to be realistic with the results you're not going to get like 
insane before and afters as if you just got so much youthfulness to your face it slowly builds collagen over time and when you stop that stops as well so you do have to continue using it same thing with like drinking collagen i drink collagen you know people have seen like oh my skin looks a little bit glowier you know like that kind of thing that's kind of what you're, what you're going to notice with using red light therapy and it does have other benefits as well but if you are looking to really really soften fine lines and wrinkles like let's say i said there's a product that you can use that can actually almost erase them and make them like very subtle like as if they're not there if i told you there was a product that could do that would you use it if i told you it was a skincare product and i for myself would be all over it i would be like yes give it to me i will try it if it costs a hundred dollars two hundred dollars but it is like guaranteed to work i will use it. i feel like most people would say yes but then if i told you that this product is botox would you still use it and i think a lot of people's answer was no i actually used to use well i say botox but i only used disport disport is within that neuromodulator family it's kind of like saying band-aids and this is the only thing that i personally have ever used i like it because it is softer it's not going to give you like that frozen look where everything is like not moving at all it's a it's a lot softer and it kicks in faster versus botox but they last the same they do the same thing the last time i got disport was like two years ago and i stopped the main reason i stopped is because my the last time i got it my brows were like super heavy so i was like maybe i'm just not the best candidate for it so i waited for that to wear off and then i never went back i already have like pretty hooded eyes so when when they're at rest they're at rest and i think that's what happened is the way that it was injected it really relaxed my muscles and it gave me really hooded eyes and it's not the injector's fault because this was a very professional injector it's i'll explain in a little bit so anyway I took a break and then I kind of restarted researching into Botox, how it actually works, like things that you're not told when you're sitting in the chair, not really. And I saw a lot of stories of people that got like, adverse reactions and stuff. And so I kind of just held off and said, okay, I'm, I'm just going to do like skincare and stuff. But I got to a point this year where I was like, you know what, <laughs> like these crow's feet of mine and my forehead wrinkles, I've had fine lines since I was like probably 24 just because of how my muscles move in my face because of my anatomy of my face like it's everybody is so different like I, I look at two different people and when somebody laughs you can see like little crinkles in their eyes whereas my sister for example when she laughs she doesn't really get that like everybody's face moves differently there's different anatomy and for me I've had it since a I was young like my early 20s like I said I also have dry skin and just like all of that contributed to me having fine lines and the only thing guys the only thing that actually works is botox disport and I, when i say the only thing that works i mean that's like the only thing that will like truly soften them to the point where they almost seem non-existent because i've you know i have this i love it for collagen production for like that youthfulness in the face and all of that but for my actual like like i have right here i was sleeping on my face all night you can see I have like a crease right there. I'm waiting for it to like even out or even right here in my forehead. I don't know if you can tell right now, but I would get fine lines and they would be there all day. And that's fine, but I don't know. This year I was like, I just want to go back to Disport and give it a try. And so my cousin, she works in aesthetics and I decided to go to her. And it's been a couple of days. It hasn't kicked in 100%. Like, like you can see, it can still move my forehead a little bit but i got it here here so i treated the forehead plus this and i'll explain why and then also the crow's feet which i can already feel this kicked in but i just have to be very mindful of sleeping on my face because i woke up this morning like i said i had a big crease here i do have that sleep and glow pillow that i still use like a year later but sometimes i still like really smush my face like it's a lot of weight but she treated this and this because i told her about the heavy droopiness that i experienced and she's like you're gonna have to treat this area if you don't want the droopiness because where certain muscles lift other ones will pull down so if you're just treating one area you're not going to get the results that you want because you're relaxing all of these muscles here so you have to balance them out so before and i was like oh i don't really care about my 11 lines so i'm never going to treat them like 
why am I gonna pay extra money to treat my 11 lines if I don't, if I'm not worried about them? But it all plays a part and you'll see a lot of aesthetic providers, even the one that I went to that I got the droopiness from, he didn't give me the droopiness, but I told him like, I don't wanna treat this area. He will tell you like, if you don't want that heaviness or if you are looking for certain results, you have to treat like multiple areas. It's just the way that the muscles work, for, especially for some people. So yeah, that is where we're at. And I'm so, 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 so happy. I know it's not for everyone, but I feel like if I were to take away everything that I have and spend my money on just this, that's all that I would spend my money on because truly it's like the only thing that will give you the very refreshed look. Now I will say that if you have texture in your skin, like breakouts and stuff, you're still going to have that texture on your skin even with a smooth forehead like i started having a couple breakouts since my dad's birthday i don't know if it was like from all the sweets or all the chaos and all of that but yeah it's not going to treat like if you have texture anything like that obviously that is going to be part of your skincare regime so you have to make sure you have a solid skincare regime and you're taking care of your skin as a whole and then i do i do i really do love having this mask for collagen production you can see that i'm drinking collagen in the morning i'm trying to like slow down the process of collagen my husband's home so for me stuff like that really is it's well studied like drinking collagen not so much applying it to the face ingesting it but then also red light therapy like it's it's very well studied for that purpose so that is why i do it and yeah i don't know i feel like people get kind of iffy and I read a quote the other day that I wanted to talk about. A lot of times when I see stuff online that I don't agree with, I have to kind of like sit back and be like, why do I feel the way that I do about this? Why is it affecting me the way that I do? Like, is it because I wish I could do it, but I can't? And I'm not accusing anyone or anything, but I'm saying like, when I see these posts, that's what I have to ask myself. I think I'm so excited. And then the quote that I read was actually, it was on a, one of my favorite theologians page. The quote was, when insecurity is the lens through which we view other people's achievements, whatever, anything that they do, then insecure, then judgment will always be the result. I think my favorite part about this mask is that you can walk around with it. I'm trying to make breakfast for the kids. The only thing is you kind of can't see that well. Like everything is illuminated slightly red because of this, but it is safe. Like you can close your eyes and relax if you want, but you can also look around, do your thing, whatever you gotta do. Anyway, I saw this on Amazon, this brand Sizzle for olive oil. I was gonna get it on Amazon. They also have a drizzle. Well, the brand is Graza but they have a sizzle and a drizzle. I think it was part of Oprah's favorite things, I'm not 100% sure, but then I went to Walmart and I saw this at Walmart and I was like, oh, let me pick it up and try it. So far I like it, I love like that it has this little twist top, it just makes it so much easier to use, but I'm gonna make my stainless steel pan non-stick. And I tried the water hack, oh my gosh, this smells so potent like olives compared to other olive oils I've tried. But to make it non-stick, I've tried the water hack it does not work as well as the oil hack. So I pour oil in here and then I let it smoke up until it's like super hot and then turn it off, wipe out the oil. I actually dump it in this little grease can right here and then let it cool down and then you can fry on it. And um, just make sure you don't do it on too high and it's completely nonstick. And yes, you are wasting olive oil. You could probably reuse it, which I've done before, but since it's already at a high smoke point, I just pour it in here and once it's non-stick it's pretty non-stick for multiple uses until you kind of scratch off the non-stick or wash it off scrub it off basically now that i got that off i'm just going to wipe it with a napkin and let it cool down it's going to be non-stick that I was having before I got bombarded with coffee and morning tasks and all of that while I did my morning makeup I wanted to share some of the products that I've been loving and also some hair care products so I started reading this app called Headway well to start I'm going to start with the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer this is my all-time favorite concealer in the world I think this is so beautiful on dry skin and it performs well I have mine in shade 1N 
I hear really great things about Natasha Denona concealer as well. I want to try that next, but I want to use this one up first before I try that one out. I've been reading a lot of like, I don't want to say self-help, but more so like self-growth to grow your mindset, your perspective, to shift your perspective, all of that, because I think that's a very important thing. Did I forget my concealer brush? No, I'm using a sponge. I think it's a very important thing to do to constantly be developing yourself. Like when you go to school to be a doctor or a like whatever, you always have to be up to date with the latest information that's out there because, you know, science changes or evolves. And I feel like the same thing applies for us as human beings. We can't always be set in how we used to always do things. Like we grow, we evolve, our mindsets change. We learn from one another. Right now there are so many resources that my parents didn't have growing up. And they weren't able to pass on to me so you are responsible for yourself so i've been reading a lot i like having different perspectives perspectives as well even if i don't always agree with what i'm reading not be in an echo chamber kind of thing i do think you have to be careful with a lot of the material you read so i have been enjoying the headway app but it's not actual full-on book books so what this app is is it's micro learning they're micro summaries of whatever category you choose whether it's personal growth um self-esteem how to you know remember things better or just like random topics health and wellness whatever you choose a category and each category will have multiple books you can choose from and it will give you a micro summary like a synopsis of that but it's not just a summary it's actual applicable advice that you can apply to your life so it's not just a summary of what the book is about it's a summary but then also gives you things that you can apply from that book to your life if you wish so i have been really enjoying that and i've been doing a lot of i want to say self-growth because i feel like for me personally i have things that i do want to change about myself and instead of moping around and ruminating on things why not grow and learn from it and develop yourself to be better so that you can be better for yourself and for the people around you that's how i see it so i'm kind of at a mindset now right now that I, you know, I'm ready to make changes and I'm sick of just like kind of repeating the same things over and over. Like I want to learn, I want to grow, I want to develop all of that. By the way, I'm going in with my all-time favorite, the Jane Iredale Press Powder and I have mine in Golden Glow. This is such a beautiful, easy, quick powder foundation and I think it is really nice for dry skin. It can get very makeup-y if you apply a lot, but if you go really light-handed, it's just the perfect flush of color and it sits beautifully in my humble opinion like you can barely tell that i have it on but if you do build it up you can see so anyway i've been you know self-reflecting and kind of learning and really like digging deep and asking myself these questions and just sitting with yourself and while i was on instagram something popped up that i thought was really interesting and it was this quote that i was trying to share and it said that when insecurity is the lens through which we view other people's experiences then judgment will always be the result and basically what that means is when we are viewing other people, what they accomplish, what they're doing, their choices, whatever it is, when we are viewing other people's experiences through the lens of an insecurity that we have, whether we know it or not, we will always judge. Like judgment will always be the result of what we say. And I was talking about like motherhood stuff, like epidurals and stuff. It wasn't so much about the epidurals for me, but that quote really stood out because I had to sit there and ask myself, like, I feel like I can relate to this because a lot of times... I'll see stuff on social media that I don't personally agree with that somebody else is doing. And then I'm like, why does this bother me? Like, how does this affect me? Like, how does do their choices affect me? Am I feeling this way because I'm a little bit insecure? Like, what is actually the root of why I'm thinking the way that I'm thinking? And when you start to shift the way that you think, you no longer, like, it's just no longer, you don't care. Like, because right now I see so much hate for other people online it just makes it so easy because of the animosity of social media it just makes it so easy to hate on other people's decisions and it's become very normalized especially when one person starts and then the thread gets larger and larger and people kind of start to bandwagon it just makes it so easy to hate on other people and their decisions and i don't agree with that i think it's okay to offer constructive criticism or maybe an opinion but a lot of what I'm seeing is not even opinion based. It's just like a lot of hating. I mean, you even have like people creating Reddit threads just to specifically hate on somebody else's decision. And that's just not productive to society. And I don't think it should be okay. But I guess that's just how social media works. I think once you sit with yourself and you kind of 
really dig deep, then you will get the answers that you need, that you're looking for. And that's the only way that we can create change. We cannot force anybody else to change. That's one thing we cannot ever do. You cannot ever force somebody to change unless they want to. And it starts with us. Like if we want to see a better environment in social media, it has to start with us and having these conversations. And so this kind of ties into the whole Botox things because I did take a break and I was kind of like, oh, I don't know how I feel about it. By the way, I got these Cover FX palettes. They were like at 70% off on the Cover FX website. I wonder if they're still on sale. I'm not crazy about the blah, blah, blah. I was going to say bronzer. The bronzer, this is sun-kissed bronze. It's nice, but sometimes for me in particular, it can look a little bit patchy, but the blush is so beautiful. This is spice cinnamon and it comes with a matte and a shimmer. Look how stunning these are. I was saying about Botox, like I took a break and I started reading into it and then I almost felt like I wanted other people to kind of make the same decision as me because that's how I felt. But I think that's a very wrong way of thinking. It is a wrong way of thinking, I don't think I know. And then I noticed my thought patterns kind of falling into like, oh, well, I wouldn't do this. So I'm going to have thoughts about other people that do. And I think that's where we are as a society is when we feel like we wouldn't do something, we start to judge other people because they start to do it. And so I've been really kind of working on changing my mindset on that. Like just because we wouldn't do something doesn't mean that we can't allow somebody else to do what they want to do. Like we are grown adults and I think especially us as women, I see so much women against women. And we say that society is to blame for the way that we are, like in terms of like the pressures that we have and how we have to look a certain way and like we have to look ageless and who makes up society? Men and women, we make up society. So I feel like women set the standards for themselves. Yes, men partake in, in it in, to a certain extent, but I feel like women are so much more a culprit to making other women feel like they, oh, we judge them by their look. So you look too old. Like there's never a good place to be because no matter what you do you're either too loud you're too quiet you're too boring you're too expressive you're too this like there's always something that somebody's gonna hate on you and i would love to see that change as a culture on social media us as women specifically because i feel like it's not really progressing us to where we should be it's kind of hindering us i don't i don't like where we've gotten to you can't change anybody else but you can change your perspective on it and have these conversations so that's kind of where i'm at i know it started off with botox so i'm just gonna add a little bit so my hairline doesn't look like it's stark white like i haven't self-tanned but i think it's so easy to judge other women and like be like oh well you're setting a standard but we have to remember like why do we feel the way that we do like if i if you found a skincare product and you're willing to spend money on the skincare product or some product that, you know, will be better for your skin, but we're judging other women for making other choices to try to take care of their skin, to me, that's just like a little bit hypocritical. It doesn't make sense. And I have to realize that for myself. So I don't know. That's where I'm at. Let me know if you guys agree. I would love to continue this conversation down below. Yeah, it takes work to, you know, get to this place and develop yourself and realize these things and i feel like this is why a lot of creators have a problem being transparent and being authentic because they get judged for it but me as a recovering people pleaser i am you know i'm trying to develop this sense of i'm not going to play into the ideals of what somebody else wants me to be i'm just going to be who i am and people can either take it or leave it that's what it is at the end of the day because somebody out there you're not going to be everybody's cup of tea and that is 100 percent true like people are going to annoy you i mean even we annoy ourselves sometimes our people that we love like our siblings annoy us so more so people online that we don't really know 100 percent, or people that know don't know us 100 percent. but i think it's if we want to have oh i have like all this bronzer right here we just have to always remember that we are speaking to other human beings online because i feel like we forgot that all right let me fill in my brows and that's kind of been my makeup routine i'm using the nyx micro brow pencil and i've been really liking keeping my brows light i just kind of fill them in a little bit they're not symmetrical so i outline them first by the way if you have really really hooded eyes then you might not be the best candidate for botox because the muscles that relax your forehead is usually what you use to raise your forehead so that your eyes are not as hooded for me, it's not as intense. If you go to the right injector that really knows what they're doing, they 
should be able to work with you to kind of for you to achieve the results you want but sometimes what ends up happening is this gets lowered and then this rises too much and you get like a really spocked brow so sometimes it's trial and error and sometimes it's realizing okay maybe this is not for me but i've taken a break for two years and i'm telling you it is like magic in a bottle if you are a candidate it is like magic in a bottle like nothing works as well as neuromodulators my light just died and i need it to finish my brows to give you that like refreshed relaxed wrinkle free look all right here's the makeup before my light dies this is kind of how i have been doing it and then for hair the light is definitely going to die 100 percent. these are the two products that i use it's the day dry shampoo my sister used this and as soon as she sprayed it on her hair she was like wow i need this where did you buy it she took a picture of it the best dry shampoo ever and then this is the big brew dry bar density building root spray it's meant to be used on dry hair at the roots to like really build up the roots sorry i accidentally closed it it can make your hair feel a little bit almost like gritty and gunky if you overdo it but if you just apply a little bit it's really going to add like a little bit of oomph to your hair and for someone like me who has really fine thin hair this is really helpful especially since i've been air drying my hair lately so i've been really liking this and this i got at ulta it's a little expensive but i do like it just try not to overdo it because once you build it up day in and day out it gets kind of gross and then the dry shampoo this this is going to really help get rid of any excess oils so these two together are just like a really nice combo you're getting rid of oils and then kind of adding some oomph to the hair so i'll link both of these down below as well and my light just died and that's okay because i'm pretty much done with this conversation but i hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me just some food for thought let me know your thoughts down below that would definitely love to continue this conversation and i really appreciate you guys hanging out with me today I'll see you soon.